March 11, 1950. This theme, I Will Praise Him, has served to introduce the Gospel Truth broadcast conducted by the Reverend Ray Rumsey, pastor of the Coles Crossroads Free Will Baptist Church, Florence, South Carolina. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom Ray Rumsey loved so much and whom he loved to serve, was pleased to take his faithful servant unto himself after a lengthy illness this past Wednesday morning, January 9, 1963. Last Tuesday morning, Mr. Rumsey underwent heart surgery to correct a defect with which he was born. This defect had caused him much pain and prolonged periods of inactivity for many years and his condition had become such that an operation was absolutely necessary. Long aware of the gravity of his condition, Mr. Rumsey made with me a little over four years ago a tape recording which it was his desire should be used if and when death should come. So this morning, the final presentation of the Gospel Truth broadcast the Atlantic Broadcasting Company is pleased to present, in accordance with the wishes of the Reverend Ray Rumsey, the following tape recording made a little over four years ago. This is December 5, 1958. Ray Rumsey is here in the studio with me today and going to give me some of the details relative to his particular physical condition about which he has learned more in just the last few days. And uh, Ray, your friends far and wide through the radio ministry that you've had for some nine years now over WJMX. Uh, most of them are acquainted with your heart condition. Uh, you were born with some of it, I guess, were you not? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, any complications develop after? Yes, when I was about seven, I had rheumatic fever, and uh, the doctor said that this fever left me with pulmonary stenosis with a heart murmur and it made the pulmonary stenosis that I was born with much worse. Mm -hmm. This stenosis of course is um, a narrowing of the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery that leads from my heart to the lungs mm -hmm. and keeps the necessary amount of blood from passing through my lungs to my body and of course causes um, my heart to be overworked to supply my body with the blood that it needs and puts a lot of pressure on my heart to do this. You have just come back from Duke University Hospital up in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, what actually transpired this visit, Ray? Well, they catheterized my heart. They made an incision in my left arm just below the elbow and went into my heart through a tube. 
and this took them about uh, four hours, three hours and 35 minutes, I believe was the exact time, uh, which time I had to remain awake during the time, and they couldn't give me anything for the pain and the uh, discomforts of it. But um, Because they of the heart condition? Yes, because of the heart condition, and uh -huh. because also they had to keep me awake to uh, breathe and hold my breath to cooperate with them at certain times to get the tube through my lungs. Mm -hmm. I had to hold my breath and breathe in a certain manner to help them get the tube to pass through my lungs into the left side of my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, it, of course, was very painful and uh, at uh, a time or two I thought uh, the end had come, but it was just <laughs> my thinking, I think, more than being that serious. Uh, the doctors assured me that during it all that my heart was beating all right and there was no danger of me dying uh, while this was going on. But uh, when the pain gets so severe, one verse of scripture that meant so much to me, and uh, at one time when they couldn't get the tube in the pulmonary valve, they couldn't get the tube to pass through the valve, mm -hmm. and I was having so much pain from them trying to force the tube through, I... Uh, was quoting scripture to myself, sweating there from the pain and eating ice that the nurse was giving to me to keep me from being sick. I was quoting scripture to myself, and the verse I was quoting was Psalms 118.6, where the psalmist said, The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. And I was quoting this to try to keep from being afraid and to reassure myself that God was with me. But... Um, on one occasion, the pain was so severe until I accidentally quoted it, quoted it out loud, and they heard me. And when they did, the nurse asked me what I'd said, and I quoted the verse to her and told her where it was found. And then the doctor asked me again to quote it for him, and I quoted it the third time for him. And on the third quotation, the tube went through the valve, and he told me I should have been quoting scripture all the time. Um, Psalm 118, verse Psalm 118, 6. verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. And I never will forget that verse. <laughs> Ray, uh, what hope does the doctor give you for the alleviation of this condition? They had hoped that this uh, experiment would uh, open up the valve. But after they got inside my heart and took the blood test, and the pressure test, they came to the conclusion that the pressure inside my heart was 110 pounds above normal pressure, and that was with me lying down. And he said that after I stood up, the pressure increased considerably. And um, when I was active, that it increased even more in a sermon or when I was excited or even when I ate too much and overloaded my heart to digest my food that it increased the pressure and of course put me in danger of bursting my heart mm -hmm. and which would mean instant death if it did do that. They also found a rupture inside my heart. The medical term they used for it was intraventricular uh, septal defect which is an opening inside the heart, inside the right ventricle. And this would require major surgery of the heart. They would have to open up my heart go inside my heart to sew this up and then at the same time they were in there they would open up the valve which would eliminate the um, pulmonary stenosis and eliminate the pressure that's in my heart. He said that after the surgery that I should be at least 85 to 90 percent perfectly normal. Uh, I'd have that good a chance of being perfectly normal and um, they are planning for me to go back this coming spring, late spring or early summer, which would be sometime the first of June possibly, mm -hmm. after school is out, to investigate the possibilities of this surgery. And if things continue as well as they are now, and if they complete the pump that they're working on, which is a mechanism for bypassing the right ventricle of my heart, so he would not have to stop my heart. He said my heart was in such a condition that it wouldn't do, it'd be too dangerous to stop my heart. And some people that need heart surgery, they can stop the heart for four, five, eight or 10 minutes and do the surgery and then start the heart back mm -hmm. and there's no damage. Yes. But he considered that my heart was in such a serious condition that if he um, stopped my heart, he 